rest of time. Yeah. It's all you have in your library to stay as muscular as possible. Give me the list. So the the goal is to be as muscular as possible. Correct. If I were, let's say I'm competing and I have 10 exercises. Sure. Or? All right. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to have to count it on my hands. Um. Hey guys, welcome to Castle's Corner. And I am Coach Castle, still recovering. Thank you all for all the emails and get well soons. But on a different note today, as you can already see, we're going to be breaking down Chris Bumstead's appearance on the podcast, talking about his top 10 muscle building exercises, if he only had 10. I'm going to go over why his opinion is completely wrong, why he really shouldn't be giving his uneducated opinion since so many people idolize him, and I'll be giving you my top 10 you should actually be doing. And as usual, I'll be going over the actual science too. Um, squats. Why? Just overall leg growth. They help glutes, quads, like a large portion of the leg that barbell really back help. squat. Barbell back squat. So okay. I might actually do some Smith machine squats because it'll help my knees and a little bit be a little bit easier. Okay. I have covered this topic at nauseum, but squatting is not a good exercise if the weight is on your shoulder. It compresses your vertebrae and it doesn't even load any of your muscles intelligently. The risk to reward ratio is plainly just stupid. However, something like this, a Cossack squat, you'll never see a C-bum doing, even though it's much more intelligent and efficient considering it targets the glute in a far superior range of motion, as well as a quadricep teaches balance, as well as stability and proception, as well as many other things I could talk about, and not requiring a gym. In order to load it heavier, you just simply add slightly more weight, or you lean your body over top of your leg more. You will want your heel to come up and your knee to go as far forward as possible while performing this, and of course, if you're looking for for big quads and glutes you want lots of reps so go ahead and go crazy guys try for 30 or 40 on each side tell me how easy you think it is or also leg extensions of course deadlifts okay. just to get something that'll target the my hamstrings and so i don't have to take out another 10 of two something two hamstring focus and glute and back focus uh Deadlift used to be an exercise I was very proud of, just like the squat. It was a staple in my workout routine. I did it every workout. However, hate to break it to you, bud, but the deadlift really does not work your hamstrings at all. It's a very pitiful movement considering it only moves your hamstrings about an at the most an inch of contraction. It's also very inefficient for your glutes considering it's backwards loaded and a very small range of motion. What is it good for? Maybe your ego. That's about it. Now, moving forward, here is a strap hamstring curl with full range of motion as well as using stability and depending how you perform it you can involve many other muscle groups such as scapular retraction scapular depression using your triceps for stability up on your fists etc much superior movement and once again high reps the sarcoplasmic zone is what you're looking for if you're looking to actually build large muscles um pull-ups so i can hit my back and biceps in one overhand underhand neutral Oh, neutral grip. Neutral probably, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit more Latin biceps. Yep. yep. Make sure my arms are going. I know most of you like the pull-up, and yeah, if there's a bar, you can do it. However, it doesn't change the fact that it's not the most efficient. It's bad for your shoulder carriage. Most people certainly cannot do 30, 40, or 50 of these in a row, as is necessary for the sarcoplasmic zone. It does not target your biceps very much, by the way. This is because the forearm is neutral with gravity, I should add. However, if you do want to target your lats efficiently, it would be a 30-30 pull-in, so you can actually have 30 to 50 reps, be in the sarcoplasmic zone. All you need is a single pulley and a roper handle of some kind guys incline dumbbell press uh-huh i find inclines a little bit better on your shoulders so if you're yeah. doing it's the only exercise you can do you won't fuck up your shoulders as much and dumbbell it'll just keep you a little bit more symmetrical yeah, i love that i've always loved that exercise w which is weird because uh incline barbell press is one of the most uncomfortable for my shoulders really yeah but you can do dumbbell yeah most people feel better with dumbbell because you can go into a position Shift around a little bit for you yeah okay how many Okay guys, so first things first, the incline bench press, if you're performing it correctly, does not target your pectorals, just 5% of your pectoral muscles, which are actually called your clavicular fibers. The muscle group which is responsible for moving the weight is the front deltoid. I have covered this in many other videos, guys. Just check out my playlist, Arguments for Intelligent Exercise. The exercise you do want to do, which actually targets the complete pectorals, is the decline dumbbell press. Now, he was right to say to use dumbbells with the incline, but once again, doesn't mean much since you're just training your front delts. If you do dumbbells with a decline, you will get full range of motion. You'll target the muscles the correct orientation. It's a much better exercise. And a reminder, 
barbells will create bilateral deficit. Do not do incline bench press if you want your chest to grow. A close grip flat bench. Different part of the chest and triceps. Uh-huh. Getting okay. Hit there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with this one, I'm actually agreeing with him. Um, not fully, though. A barbell, as previously stated, is not the best, but um, it's basically the same thing as what I'm showing you here, which is just a front deltoid push-up. Now, depending where you put your forearm lever depends which muscle is activated more. So if you move your hands forward, obviously it's the tricep more because the tricep is responsible for extending the forearm. If it's back more and your wrists are by your belly button, this is much more heavier load on your front deltoids. So select your load this way or with a barbell. No real disagreement here, except most people do not perform the close grip bench press with proper form, so just be careful of that. Girl, uh, standing supinated. Okay, good, yeah. good. Yeah. The, go, the, the, the OG of dumbbell curls. Just the OG, yeah. All right, so once again, not a complete disagreement, although I do know why he says standing. It's because if you're standing, as I've seen him do in many of his videos, he is swinging the weight using momentum in other things other than the bicep. I recommend you do it sitting or you do it with a cable and you make sure you're doing it one arm at a time unilaterally, stabilizing the arm about 10 degrees in front of the body. And if you finish it with a twist at the end, you'll be targeting the bicep maximally. If you leave it in neutral grip, you'll be targeting the forearm a little bit as well, just so you guys know. Did they say bent over row? No. Bent over row. Okay. It'll, that'll help like stability, the like core as well. Uh-huh. And then like lower back and obviously upper back. Yeah, because the only back exercise that you've had so far is the pull-up. Deadlifts and pull-ups. Yeah. Bent over rows. Yeah. Okay, so number one, doing a rowing movement with a barbell or a T-bar of any form is going to be targeting your rear deltoids. It certainly won't be targeting your abs as your abs are responsible for keeping your core stable as well as your obliques. If you're doing a row, you are targeting your rector spinal to keep yourself up. That's a back muscle, but not the one you're trying to target. On top of that, since your arms are connected to your rear deltoids, but not your mid or lower trapezius, which are connected to your scapula, if you would actually like to train the center of your back, you're going to have to retract your scapula at a 45 degree angle, as is seen here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is set the cables or ropes, depending if you're using body weight, 45 degrees on either side of you, outside of your center line, and then bring your scapula together at the conclusion. The first part is for rear delts. The second part is for middle and lower trapezius, if performed correctly. Now, depending where you put your feet, further forward or further back, will depend on the load. And of course, again, looking for 30 to 40 reps here. It's quite easy, guys. It's like a hanging leg raise, just to make sure your core is getting hit. You're not mm -hmm. like fucking up your back. As I've already addressed many times, and you can clearly see for yourself, the abdominals do not lift the legs. That is the job of the psoas, as you can see in the previous animation. The job of the abs is to bring the lower rib cage to the pelvis primarily if they're contracting. In order to do this, all you need is a crunch with your lower back starting flat on the floor. Once again, hanging leg raises are a terrible exercise for your abs, as to get to that point, you will need to use momentum, generally speaking. I would probably do lateral raises just to get some meaty delts over. Fuck yeah. You just do more well, you've got grip. the close grip and you've got the uh, incline press. Yeah. No, you will not get meaty delts by doing this unless you want to spend 20 years doing it. So, no. Here's how you do do it. You do it horizontally, beginning with maximal resistance on a lengthened muscle and finishing with little to no resistance on a fully contracted muscle, as you do with every other muscle on your body. Think the bicep. If you do it his way, standing lateral raise, not only do you use momentum, but you are also basically doing a backwards resistance curve and you're not gonna efficiently tard the muscle. On top of the fact you're gonna use momentum, you're gonna be swinging, bending your arms, straining your back and many other things. In my version, you get to train your diaphragm, your pelvic floor muscles, your oblique, your transverse abdominis, your psoas, your quadratus labartum, your abdominals and many other stability muscles on top of correctly training your lateral deltoid. What do you think? Dumbbell shoulder press. Uh-huh. Seated? Seated. Yep. Dumbbell shoulder press. Yeah, I think that'll help your triceps and shoulders a lot. Okay, so considering he's actually targeted his shoulders in about five of the exercises he's mentioned so far, none of them efficiently, and I've already correctly targeted your front deltoid, lateral deltoid, and rear deltoid, and there's not another shoulder muscle to do, let's talk about calves, something Seabum doesn't have nor train correctly. 
Training your calves correctly should be with a straight leg so the muscle is fully elongated. Now to train the gastrocnemius primarily, you're gonna do a full contraction, ballerina thing, tippy toes, and then you're gonna lower the weight for about four seconds, completely stopping and pausing at the bottom for at least one full second, think 1001. The reason for this is it removes the bounce reflex or the solaris and tendons taking over and elastically repelling you back upwards. We don't wanna do that for muscle growth. We want the muscle to do the work and the muscle to contract, not the tendons. Therefore, this version is much better for actually growing your calves. Hey guys, so just in a quick recap, I told you guys to correctly train your biceps, triceps, forearm flexors, lateral deltoid, front deltoid, rear deltoid, upper trap, middle trap, lower trap, your pectorals, your lats, your obliques, your transverse abdominis, your abdominals, your erector spinal, your psoas, your glutes, your adductors, your abductors, your quads, your hamstrings, your calf, and your tibius anterior. So that's what I went through training all of those, oh, I'm sorry, and your diaphragm and a few other small muscles such as your serratus anterior and your rhomboids, etc. I covered how to do all of those perfectly, most of them not requiring a gym. Sebum, well, he missed just about every muscle I just mentioned and he correctly told you how to train the front delts. The pull-up was not bad uh, for the lats. None of the muscle groups he said you were training were you really training efficiently in the slightest and this is my problem with people like Seabum. But anyways, please guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Am I an asshole just because I know basic physics, basic biochemistry, how muscles actually grow? Something a bodybuilder should probably know. Am I the asshole? Is his coach the asshole? Is Seabum the asshole? Who's the asshole? And don't forget guys, as always, if you find this content helpful, please consider thanking me with a monetary donation, joining the channel, checking out my other videos. I have over 900 going to the description, going to my website, going to my newsletter, going to my Etsy store, going to my email, anything. How can I help you guys? Let me know who would you like me to bust up next because these uneducated people really, really need to stop talking so confidently when people will believe anything. If they're going to talk about this stuff, talk about it like I do, where I actually explain my reasoning, my logic, and how I know what I know, so you can know that I know what I know. And we can both move forward confident that we have the best exercises or the best diet or whatever it may be. And if you think I'm wrong about something in this video, by all means, contact me. My email is in the description. I'm looking forward to debating you. Maybe I'll learn something new possibly, or maybe you'll learn something new, also a possibility. Everybody have a great day, stay hard, stay on your grind. But I won't give up, I'll never stop till I wash up on the sand or Mars, finally stop. I will be the best, headed up for change, I just started on my quest. Yeah, the world will know my name, I'm excited, I'm obsessed. No one in my way but myself and a test. Yeah, I will be the best, yeah, I will be the best. It's just a game, I'll be playing till I rest I'll be there to claim my own spot among the best Deep within my mind, I'll put all my gear to rest Cause I will be the best, yeah, I will be the best I can, I gotta study, I'll cram I gotta make up a plan to give me some kind of chance I gotta enter a new mode or else I'll get KO'd My life's at a crossroad, I'm ready to reload I gotta learn some kind of lesson from my past I made mistakes, but I learned how to react I love